Hey there, guys! It's, um, it's that guy you just simply love to hate, yet you keep asking me back. It's just some random geek. And I actually have someone here that is... <sighs> okay. Uh, I've been a huge fan of her work, especially when I was first introduced to her. I basically started to watch slash stalk all the members of this cast from Skullgirls. It is Miss Danielle. How are you today, ma'am? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I I'm doing all right, rain and all. But I I don't even know where to start. Well, I, 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 I'm going to ask a question I asked you on Twitter. I have to start with the hard-hitting questions. Yay. When you got the role of Pain Wheel and you came into the recording booth, how many bottles of water did it take again? It took like nine bottles. <laughs> nine bottles of water and lots of dedication. <laughs> But I, I, I gotta ask you—you you worked with Mike Z, the the creator of this project, this this team. Uh, this has been his baby for years on end. He's been thinking about this from, I believe, back in his college days. I, I have to ask, what was it like working with um, Mr. Mike Z? Um, well, I started recording for Pain Will. I didn't meet Alex or Mike yet. Um, I met them after. Um, I met them at Salty Cupcakes. Mm -hmm. Um. They're really, really cool. Um, I worked with a guy named Vincent, who's in charge of all the audio work, I believe. Um, and I worked, of course, with Christina um, when I did the recording process. That, that's another question I wanted to ask you about. Uh, Miss Christina V, I, I got to talk to her very briefly through um, a friend of mine, Vesper. We worked on a video together. What, what, what is she like, you know, with, in person or with just, just talking with her? Because she seems like just this very, very, like, happy... I don't know how to describe it. She she always seems like peppy when she talks to me. I don't know. Yeah, she's very she's she's like that in person. She's really sweet. I love her. Um, we've been friends for years. So to have her or audition for her and the, the rest of the time in Virgin Labs was was a dream come true. Just because I loved this game before it became like the game. Because <laughs> I remember I was looking up the game when it had like just Philly Ad and Cerebella for the beta testing mode or something and I thought oh this is really cool I want to try an audition for this so when I pretty much got the audition call from uh, Christina to audition for characters and I was really stoked and then when I got the role for Pain Will I got even more stoked <laughs> but what what kind of drew you to the character of Pain Will were you like were you shown concept art or were you shown the character before you um you really got to, um, you know, try out for the character, and when you did, what what kind of drew you to uh, Pain Wheel? Um, well, when we got when I got the audition for her, they pretty much gave us um, the voice actors who auditioned for her um, a description of her character, her backstory, and then they gave us like uh, what they wanted her to sound like. So they were really aiming for like an animalistic sound for her. Um, and in her picture, I love going by pictures when I do auditions because I can usually find the character within the picture where I can, find the, I can find the voice through the character art. And um, I got really inspired by uh, Bioshock with her, because when I saw her, I thought one of the spice was in Bioshock. Mm. And lots of Bane and everything. It, do, you do, do you do that often? Do you often do that when going out for an audition? Are you, like, given a photo, and you just sort of, that's, that just tells the tale for you? Yeah, um, there's been a few auditions recently that they really didn't have a, a like a, they had a description, but they didn't have a picture, so I kind of just had to make up something as I was reading the description for a certain character. They'd give us an age, they'd give us a voice type, and they'd give us, I guess, like a, a reference of what they want us to sound like, but I really think that pictures really help a lot. Uh, I, I gotta ask, you worked with with Skullgirls, a, a much smaller project, I have to ask, what is the difference between working for a project like Skullgirls and, say, something like League of Legends, World of Warcraft, Planet Side 2, something, um, not to downplay anything that the team has done, but something put out by a AAA company on with a massive major release. Is there any difference between working with the two, or do they just sort of all come out the same? Um, to me, they pretty much come out the same. When I was working for, with uh, World of Warcraft, the the guy I was working with, um, one of the directors, um, he was um, he played the game as much as my sister does because she plays World of Warcraft. She used to play it a lot, and she had to kind of let go of it. <laughs> but um, 
when he was directing me for that character, it was almost like um, a gamer was directing me or a gamer was telling me, okay, you have to do this. In order to defeat this boss, you have to do this move. But instead of doing, like, certain moves in a booth, they told me, like, you have to act, like, add this much more intensity with this line. And if it's a screaming line, just go all out. And I don't know, it just felt, it just felt the same as Skullgirls because it was all fun. I didn't really notice any differences between Skullgirls and WoW and LOL. All right, next question, and this is a very important one. <clears throat> Alliance or Horde? I really wish I knew. I never played the game, um, but I'll just I'll just go on a whim and just say Horde. Which actually perfectly leads me into my next question. Out of the games that you have voice act for, how many of them have you played, and how many of them have you like fallen in love with, or if they're just some that you played and you just sort of went, eh? Um, I played almost all the games that I've been in. Um, I want to try out Planet Side 2 a lot more because a friend of mine actually had me play the game a little bit and I was like, I don't know what's happening. And about an hour or so into it, I really love the game. Uh, I play lots of League of Legends, of course, Skullgirls. Um, there's a few other games like Dragon Nest. I haven't played that one yet. And uh, World of Warcraft, I'm kind of afraid to play that. <laughs> Um, it, 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 it's life consuming it, 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 yeah my, I saw my sister play it and she's like leave me alone I gotta go get to this mission now like, okay I'll leave you alone <laughs> so um, I play a lot of stuff some of the stuff I, I'm in but not everything because I don't really have time to play everything and there's some things that I'm just too afraid to play with because of commitment reasons <laughs> now there's this, um, I believe, it, is this your first television appearance, TV series with Kaijin Spirit Chronicles? Would this be your first um, TV series you've worked with? Um, yeah, actually. Um, it was actually a friend of mine from a site called The Voice Acting Alliance, and he wanted to put together like a, a, a cartoon kind of anime series together. And so he had auditions on the site, and he's, he just wanted people to audition for it. And... I think either I auditioned for it or he came to me and asked me if I was interested in auditioning or, or voicing for a certain character. And, uh, yeah, we haven't started recording yet, but I can't wait till we do. It should be fun. Can you, I, I, I don't know if you can divulge any details about it, but is there anything you can tell us about the series? Um, at the moment, I haven't been told anything. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, I haven't been told anything. Um, I guess it's because if I say anything, if I knew anything about it, which... I wish I did, then I guess it would probably make the audience want more out of the series and be like, when's it coming out? Like, instead of it being, when's Marvel, it could be, when's Kaigen? So. That would be amazing. <laughs> I, would, I, I would pay for that t-shirt. <laughs> yes. So, I, I, I gotta ask, going back, what what started you on this path? What, what, what just snapped, put in your head, I'm gonna be a voice actress? Um, when I was a little kid, I used to watch a lot of cartoon shows, like Thundercats and stuff, but there was one show that kind of made me want to do the whole voice acting thing, and it wasn't even a cartoon, it was like a live-action show, it was a, a show called Charles in Charge with Scott Baio. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there was one episode in there, I think it was his mom or grandma, she was dressed up as Elvis, and she was trying to do like an Elvis impression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, when she tried to change her voice up, I, I thought, it was the weirdest moment, like I thought... Oh my gosh, that's really cool. He changed their voice. I want to do that. So that was like my, my beginning stage of like saying, oh man, I want to be a voice changer. I didn't know it was called voice acting. I just called it voice changing. And then when I got older, um, I didn't really think that I was good at voice acting. So I just wanted to do the computer animation thing for character design for video games. And then I went to school for that. And I guess I, I had too much ADD. I didn't have any patience to finish anything, like any of the projects that they had us do, like making fish and stuff. So then I um, went to college and I took up some theater classes and then from there I kind of wanted to get into voice acting and I took things in classes and it all started off from there. Now, from your track record, you know you've worked on a ton of video games. You're working on this on this internet anime series, but are you happy with the path you've chosen? Like this is definitely what you'd want to do, or? want to do something more commercial something like you know television shows you know film or are you happy with um the path you are because i'm i'm certainly happy with the work you have put in amazing work but i thought that was a question worth submitting oh thank you um i'm actually really happy with the, tra the path i've chosen um surprisingly enough i'm actually really shy in front of the camera so 
I was originally thinking of doing like on camera work, but I thought, I don't know, I'm way too shy for this. So I don't know. I, I like voice acting a lot. I love I love doing whatever voice acting related commercials, video games, uh, anime, anything. So I, I'm really happy with it. That's always good to hear. I I, I like hearing that someone actually passionate about their work. But I, I I have to ask, what did you get any sort of reaction, or did anybody just blow you up on Twitter with? how the Indiegogo fundraiser campaign for Skullgirls has been going. First meeting, the first milestone within 24 hours, and then getting the second one, and with Mike Z announcing that the group who tried to make the My Little Pony fighting game, who got canned by Hasbro, that they were going to get their engine, and then it seems like overnight they reached a $750,000 goal. Did you get just absolutely blown up on Twitter, and how did you, how, what did you think when this like massive goal was reached um i was following it religiously um the whole indiegogo fundraiser i was even trying to tweet it out and like hey guys you should donate because i'm gonna donate too and i didn't think it was gonna go close to a million dollars and when we went up to 830k i actually started crying because i was like i didn't expect that it's like the little engine that could pretty much this game so um and I got hit up a lot on Twitter too. There are people saying, "Hey, we reached this much now. Hey, look, look, look what we're doing now." And they'd make fan art and put it up my wall, and I really like that. And I still love fan art and stuff, but that was—I I, I have no words for that. It was just—I don't know. It was like for me a moment in my personal history book. <laughs> that's, that's gonna be one you're gonna tell people for the longest time. I was exactly there. back in my day, no. <laughs> Uh, our next question, this is a really small one, but have you ever heard of a website called Skullheart, which considers, which is, I think, kind of consider it the official Skullgirls forum? Yeah, um, I actually regularly um, visit that site. I think now it's still down a little bit. It is, yeah. Kind of down. Um, but when it was up, I went on it every day. Um, the Skull fans are really awesome and generous, and I did something on there where I was looking for people to help me create Valley Will valley girl pain wool lines and it was like almost 200 lines that they c came up with and i don't know i love it it's awesome i just wish it came back up because i like that site <laughs> i love it too it's i like trolling people on there because it's fun but <laughs> i i guess hmm. another question i want to ask is because I, I see this a lot i see a lot of people who want to be who want to do what you're doing. They start YouTube channels, they get editing software, they start releasing their voice reels. You are someone who, by most standards, by everyone's standards, by my standards, you've made it into it. You have done amazing work. So I have to ask, if for anybody who is just start trying to get their start, you know, trying to put out those voice reels, what, what would you tell them? Um, well, I tell them to practice. Um, I started off on a site called the Voice Typing Alliance, and I did a lot of fan projects on there and radio projects. And I think even now I practice every day just to keep my uh, voices in my head. Um, I don't know. I, I keep them fresh, and I keep them kind of – and I just maintain them. So I think practicing really helps. Um, another thing that helps is um, if you can take, like, any acting classes or theater classes in your high school or college or – Something like that. I mean, that'll help too. I mean, not just for developing characters, but well, yeah, for de developing characters, but also to um, create a voice with that character you've created. So I think theater really helps, and improv helps, and even just putting the videos on YouTube helps. I used to do that too. Um, just any sort of um, any anything anything really helps, like SoundCloud, anything pretty much. So practice, practice. Practice, practice. Well, that, that's another question. Do you ever practice, practice up on Skullgirls? Um, a little bit. <laughs> um, I, I do um, mostly like button mashing, but um, I've learned some of the moves. Like, I've learned Cerebellus level 3. I learned, uh, I think it was Valentine's level 5. Um, I just practice on the level 5 of the specials, but when it comes to the combos, I'm still bad. <laughs> so we're going to see her in the combo scene, on, on the tournament scene, real soon. Yes. Well, I may be going to Evo, so... Oh, get out. <laughs> I may be going to Evo. Oh, you, you guys hear, heard it here first on this random person's channel. That, but e Evo, have you have you ever been out to Evo or um, ever, like, 
seen the main stage? I've always wanted to go to EVO, um, but this is my, actually my first time going, and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, so I was like, I'm never going to go to EVO, uh, and it's like, the Skullgirls thing happened, and there people saying, oh, you should go to EVO, you should go check out EVO, and check out the Skullgirls tournament and everything, and yeah, I can't wait to go. <laughs> But someone, someone like you, it sounds like you play a lot of video games, obviously. Uh, I gotta ask, do you have any favorites? Any of them that you've just held on to and you're just like, yes, this is this is something I will play forever. Yes. Um. Well, actually, I blame my dad for getting me into video games at a young age. Um, my first game I played was Super Mario RPG, oh, and awesome. I still love that game. But if I had to choose one game that I couldn't let go of. Well, I have, I have a lot of favorites, like Darkstalkers and uh, um, the Metal Gear series. I love that. Um, Silent Hill. I think it has to be Silent Hill. Silent Hill, um, the first one? The first, Yeah, the first one to the third one. Mm-hmm. And I might as well throw out a hypothetical question. Or what, what is that? What would be your dream project? That project that if the phone just rang and you heard it, you would just drop everything and just do it because this is what you've always wanted to do. Um, it either has to be Sailor Moon or like a Mass Effect project. I hear that they're supposed to be making another Mass Effect game, so I'd be happy with either or. <laughs> That'd be awesome. And Miss Daniel, I gotta say, it, it, it's as short as this interview has been, it has been an absolute treat to talk to you because it's like... I, I don't know. It's it's awesome to actually talk to someone who who works in games, who is actually passionate about their work or likes their work. So many people in the the industry just seem to passively know their own work. So thank you very much. For You're seeing. welcome. And I I hope I get to talk to you again at some point. Maybe oh, definitely. Eddie, no. Yeah. Oh, you're going to Evo? I'm I'm gonna try to make my way. I'm gonna try to compete this year. Awesome. Well, I hope to see you there. That'd be awesome. All right, and I think we're gonna cut it here. This has been just some random geek, and I'm signing out. Peace. Bye bye.